Welcome back, Dark. Wrong thing. I haven't even recorded the next Dark Souls episode yet. Crap, I've got to do that. Whatever, it'll be up in time. Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Nanalays at Dawn. I am your host, who is becoming increasingly scatterbrained, Shadow Fury 333. And this last match tonight is going to be between Helvor and Dynfrind on Avalanche. And this map. I'm honestly a little bit wary of this game, but at the same time, it sounded like it might be okay and it's a bit of a longer game. So I'm still curious, but Avalanche produces some odd games because of the way it's kind of lane-based. The center usually gets bogged down and becomes a bit of a mess, like trench warfare kind of thing. Admittedly, when it becomes, when people really know what they're doing, they'll tend to go down the bottom and the top, especially the top. If you, players know what they're doing, they take the north. They go through the north. Players who sort of know what they're doing take the south, and everyone takes the center because you do want to take the center. That's super important. You cannot underestimate the center. But the north and south also, you got to take those too. But the thing is, that's what makes the games go from being boring trench warfare to actually being interesting with flanking maneuvers and everything. Hopefully, both Hellwar and Dynafrin do take advantage of that. Dynafrin going for Amphib Factory, while Hellwar going for the Cloakybot Factory. No one going for light vehicles, which I find a bit surprising. That's very typical in this map. Light vehicle for Scorcher Rush or Slasher Push. Either way, light vehicles are popular here, but no, neither player going for that. Both of them going for bots. And Dynafrin immediately going through the south side of the map, which I like to see as I was just completely pontificating about. Whereas Hellwar, going straight through the center, but only one unit so far, so I can't really talk. And Hellwar gonna be probably a little behind here. Looks like they're not setting up as efficiently. Dynfriend getting their energy economy going quickly, but looks like Hellwar beat them too, and that's why Hellwar's metal is not as great. That's the one thing about Avalanche. It's really hard to set up your economy optimally. Like... The metal extractors are so far apart from each other that you really do need to have a constructor set up to actually build this last one over in the corner. Dying Friend, are they going to send a commander over there? Yeah, they are. Oh, that's going to take a while. Thankfully, it is a support commander, so it's not going to take as long because it does have a higher build range. Like the green circle there, that's the build range. That is a higher build range than the recon com over to the north. So that's not oh, support com too, never mind. It is a higher build range than every other commander, which you do want. But even then, on this map, that's a lot of calm walk time. So, that's tough. Both players, however, do have their 10 and 10. So, metal and energy is high enough to be able to have the factory run full speed. The problem, of course, being that took a while. And now it's going to be kind of all for nothing if Dying Friend is able to get through this. Sorry, is not able to get through this. Helvor... Nice harassment, they're getting rid of a Metal Extractor, but about to lose that Glaive. As I say, it loses the Glaive, and the Metal Extractor is now down. That will be a bit of a blow, but yeah, it's kind of hard to say. On the other hand, though, Hellwar coming in with size right away. Very good move against Amphib. Not necessarily optimal, but really close to, because the thing with size is that you really can only counter them with a lot of cheap units. Stuff that can basically just scout out cloaked units. Now, definitely, they are more expensive than ducks. Like, they're three times the cost of ducks, but at the same time, ducks are usually not built in enough numbers to totally screen out any of these, and besides, their decloak radius is not that big. I believe the blue is the decloak radius. I've got... Seriously, someone write labels on those? I would, but I don't know what they are. Actually, I don't even know. I think it might be engine-based. Anyway, the point is, I'm fairly certain blue is decloak, and that is... Yeah, it totally is. They just decloak when attacking. So yeah, size against Amphib. What do you have to screen against that? Really, what do you have? I'd almost recommend just flash building, especially when Dying Throne has... I mean, they have the economy for it. Just get... And they had a conch, too, somewhere around here. Yeah, it's down here. Like... Use that, get another con, set up a caretaker, who cares? Flash build a spider bot factory, set up fleas. Use that for screening. I mean, it's a little expensive, but considering that there's currently 500 metal worth of size here, and probably more, yeah, it's 750 now, there's a lot of metal worth of size here, and they're gonna kill ducks. Like, two sides, one shot at duck. And it's, well, not impossible, but difficult for them to get through, so the sides are really winning this. Admittedly, both of them do have to kill off six ducks in order to be effective, but at the same time, just not considering the math, but considering the specific situation of the map control here, Hellwar is able to push forward. Dynfrin's advantage, though, is they took the south. Like, Dynfrin took the south hard. 
The problem, though, Hellwar can just take that back. If Hellwar wants to, they can just go down there. It's just Hellwar is more concerned about defending. And frankly, I think that might be a little bit misguided. And at this point, Dying Friend switching to boys. I guess they're figuring, if I can't scout out Hellwar's size, I'll just tank them out. Which, given the way Hellwar's playing is a good idea. However, going forward, like, that's more because that's the way Hellwar's playing right now. Generally speaking, this is a bad way of going about it. Because the sides don't need to attack your units. Remember, sides are cloaked. Which means size attack on the size terms. And I'm actually a bit surprised Hellwar is attacking the way they are. I mean, they are getting rid of a lot of these ducks, which is effective. But that's really because of the size of the army. And really, Hellwar would probably do a lot more damage attacking the south. Because right now, what does Hellwar have for economy? They have a bit of reclaim, a bit of overdrive, and 10 metal per second less than Dynfriend. So Dynfriend can really just outproduce. They could, if they wanted to, build that flea factory. And just wipe out all these sides, like scout them out, and then let the ducks range and alpha take advantage of the situation, rather than having all the ducks get shot before they know what's coming. Because that's been the problem so far for Dynthrind. Is they have no way of scouting this, they have no way of screening. And they have the money to do it. They have the money to build up a spiderbot factory, or a light vehicle factory for darts. They have money to get screening units. Actually, Athena might be able to even build screeners, I'm not totally sure, but the point is... I think it can. I can't remember. No one builds Athena, and I can't check the build list right now, unfortunately, because it's not in play. So, I'm not totally sure. Athena is one of those weird things. But definitely, Spiderbot Factory, which is a bit more expensive, would do the trick. Or Light Vehicle Factory, and also Light Vehicle would allow for some more artillery going forward. Spiderbot Factory, not so much. The Recluses would be okay, but really, if you had... I mean, Ravagers just to punch through all this stuff. Or you had the Wolverines to admittedly get into trench warfare situation but the point is darts or fleas some kind of scouting or dirt bags doesn't matter something to screen out these sides something to make sure that the sides are fighting on dying terms rather than hell wars because right now hell war can attack wherever they want and it's really just been kind of dying friends luck that hell war has not attacked the economy infrastructure yet but they're about to like here we see like hell war is just about to go around the back looks like they're actually targeting the factory yeah, they're going to hit the economy in the way, but I'm pretty sure Hellwar wants to go for the factory instead. Get rid of that. Getting kind of unlucky with the attack ranges there. These sides are on fire at will, but they are going... They're, yeah, attacking the... Attacking the commander, actually. That's that's the goal, not the factory at all. Get that commander down. And this is a bit of a bad move. In fact, this is a very bad move. This is actually the very move that Dying Front wants. Like, this is the best thing that could have happened to Dying Front. At all. This game. I know Hellward's got more size now, but Hellward just donated about 400 metal, I think. Yeah, 400 metal exactly. That's a lot of metal to donate. Yeah, these are all 100 each. So Hellward just donated enough metal to build that factory I was talking about. Admittedly, some characters being built up as well, but yeah, to build a second factory, Hellward just provided Dying Fruit with all the money they need, while also getting four sides off the field. So Dynfriend's in a great position right now. I mean, they have the economy advantage, they have the military advantage. I mean, the sides are a problem, and that's the biggest problem right now, is that now Hellwar actually is attacking where they should. Attacking the south is something that should have happened, like, three or four minutes ago. And Hellwar's finally doing that. So this will be a problem very shortly. But at this point, Dynfriend's got the frontal assault advantage, and instead of going for the Dante... Really, Dying Front doubling down on the tank through the side strategy rather than trying to screen them out and deal with them more directly. Which, I guess is clever in its own way. I do see one big advantage to doing this, although it's risky as hell because Dying Front is very rapidly losing their economy to the south. But the one reason I could see why this wouldn't be a bad idea, or at least not total suicide, is that Dying Front basically has essentially a way of just punching through hell war without any worries, because Hellwar has no reason right now to stop building sides, other than a read. Like, basically, other than a hard read that Dying because Hellwar hasn't scouted since they attacked, they haven't, they've got nothing going. I mean, they could too, because the sides are cloaked, but they have nothing in Dying Throne's base to figure out what's going on. So, beyond a hard read, the only reason why Hellwar would bother switching out sides, because they have been working well so far, would be because they, they actually see screeners. If screeners happen, the size would stop happening. 
Which admittedly would also be good because then Diamond would be able to see the enemy and not have to worry about it so much. But at the same time, if they're able to tank through it, and building a Dante is a great way of tanking through it, then the size will be totally useless, there'll be no other defenses to deal with, and that should be able to punch through. However, Hellwar is switching to Glaives. Not the best idea, especially given that there's boys and... Not so much boys, but definitely scallops up. And the Ducks just one-shot Glaives. Like, Ducks beat Glaives, so... I mean, in this matchup, the sides were a good idea. It's just that, like I said, Dimefront has gone for the tank it out strategy, which I think is going to work for no other reason than Hellwar really hasn't gone for any other options besides Light Raiders or Totally Cloaked Raiders. Neither of which deals with Banch with Dante. I could see if there was a bunch of Roccos. Like, that would be the thing to do. But that's not happening. So at this point, Hellwar is basically going to be just desperately trying to get rid of everything they can. They don't know, I don't think, that they have to be desperate at this point. But they do. They really do. And this is just going to be, I mean, especially it helped out that, I mean, mostly into the Strider Hub. But it helped out that there was that 400 metal from all of those sides, which basically dealt no damage. They killed one metal extractor and that was it. And more attacks with no damage being dealt. That scallop holding its weight. On top of that, the Ducks also blowing their weight. I mean, really, Dimefreund's got a great army composition to deal with this. And Hellwar not switching over to Rocco's. Getting Hammers, which I do kind of agree with, but not totally. I think Hammers are going to be really risky. For this army composition, they're not useful. The Ducks will just pound them out. Like, it's not going to work. They can get behind the defenses, sure, but the Ducks don't have to care about it. And the Ducks are already in a flanking position. Like The south side... Dimefrain's got that. Surprisingly not rebuilding the Metal Extractors. That needs to be done. Dimefrain needs to rebuild those. But otherwise, yeah, it's perfectly fine for, for Dimefrain right now. And hell, we're getting Warriors, which will not do any good. Zeus's would be okay. But then again, they don't know about the Dante. Warriors, no. Warriors are a terrible choice against Ducks. The Ducks High Alpha almost always wrecks the Warriors before the Warriors are able to get two shots in. So, the thing is, the Warriors rely entirely on the Rate of Fire and their Splash. Rate of fire doesn't matter if you're dead before you get to shoot. And against ducks, that's what happens. The hammers are not a terrible idea. It's just that they're, as soon as any pressure is applied, they're going to fold. Like, nothing's going to stop any anything getting through here other than the defenses. And if these defenders go down, the hammers are dead. So I'm just surprised there's no Rockos or anything else, really. And I'm really surprised there's Warriors. Of all things. Like, we're going to see right now. These warriors are going to move forward. I think they're going to... Are they going to engage the ducks? Is Hellwar going to go for it? I don't know. Dimeframe does have the Dante up. Moving forward now. Northside being flanked out as well. And Dimeframe able to just crush the small amount of expansion that was over to the north. No engagement to the south. Defenders are getting some shots in. I think. Yeah, just barely getting some shots in. And this is giving the Warriors the confidence they need to assault, and they're going to die for it. Although managing to get rid of a few ducks, three Warriors able to actually overcome the duck range and alpha advantage. But on the other hand, that's 440 value worth of ducks compared to what was, at the time, 640... Actually, it was more than 440. It was 660 versus 640. So even then, there was more Warriors than ducks. And still a Warrior died trivially. But hey, the Warriors are not being as use useless as I thought in larger groups. I may have to reconsider. It may be a leveler situation, a leveler scorcher situation where one on four or whatever, like one on three, the warriors lose. But when it becomes group versus group, like more than one warrior, then the warriors win. And the Dante going for the flanking maneuver as well and not even going for the direct approach, going for the flank, which is pretty much going to spell death for Hellwar. There's nothing here. Hellwar spent so much in the main lane. There's a lot of defense in the main lane and nothing else. Absolutely nothing. Not to mention... Oh, Jin teleports. Yeah, actually, come to think of it, had Dimefrain built a Jin, that would have been basically just pull the army straight into Hellwar's base, no questions asked. Because the flank here, this flank, that would have been perfect. And now Hellwar is probably regretting having invested so much in the front lines of the center lane. Given that the north lane has basically spelt their doom, but Dimefrain, this is a really good strategy. Really good setup. I mean, the sides are still up. They're still going around. They're still getting tanked out. And the Warriors not going to be able to do much against the Dante. 
Like, the Dante's main weakness right now is being confused. As it's boiled for choice for targets. It's got everything. It can just eat up and burn, but doesn't know which one to start with. And yeah, Hell War. Do they have any backup plans? Because on this map, you kind of don't. If you get hit hard like this, this is basically it. And Hell War losing all their economy. What is this Eraser trying to do? It's like it's trying to set up a warrior bust of some kind, but that's not going to work. Especially due to the lack of energy. Yeah, Hell War out of energy. And that Eraser completely down. The Dante alone finishing everything off. I mean, that... That was kind of risky. Had Hell War properly read that and gone for... Well, mainly skirmishers. I think Zeus and Rocco would have been the way to go. They would have been fine. But instead, they went for warriors, which are okay against ducks, but not great. Looks like in larger groups, they do okay, though. But against boys, they're going to be completely wrecked. And then they also went for more size, which... Well, like I said, this is the tank them out strategy. Dying Fruin was on top of this. Hell with a counterattack with some warriors. That'll be the last thing that'll happen before this game's over. This attack, I'm curious how far it'll go, but I don't think it'll go very far. The Ducks coming in, able to get rid of two Warriors, taking minimal losses, well, not minimal losses, but for Ducks, considering. Uh, got rid of one Warrior for free. The other Warrior took a bit more shots before it was down itself. But yeah, this army's way too big. Hellwar never had the economic advantage. Dying Throne was always ahead. And that just worked out. Like, Dying Throne just got their da Dante, they got their army. They never really had to worry about too much of scythe attacks because the scythes were on the center lane. They never went flanking to the south. If they got flanking to the south, this game probably would have played out differently. But because Hellwar tried to go for gold, went for the commander directly, must have been thinking they were playing another TA variant because not in 0k, getting rid of that's handy. It gets rid of some economy and build power, but it does not win you the game. <laughs> Should you build catapult? If you have to ask, the answer is yes. Because seriously, why not? If you have to ask, it means you're in a position where it doesn't matter one way or the other. So you might as well just for fireworks. At any rate, Cloaky by Factory being rebuilt for Hell War. But I don't see it doing much good. And actually, oh, Dynefront's commander gone down thanks to the ducks. At this point, it makes no difference. Grizzly on Dante. I mean, when you consider this is the entirety of Hell War's infrastructure, that's it. That's game. I'm actually kind of impressed Hellwars holding on as long as they are, but this isn't going to build in time. Six metal per second means that's gonna that took about two minutes to build. And Dying Friends basically got everything else locked down. So Hellwars going to lose their commander, and they're going to throw in the towel as soon as that happens, because there's nothing to rebuild this. Not even then. Dying Friend takes it before even that happens. I'm curious what the excess was. Dying Friend actually accessing 600 metal. When did that happen? It would have been... No, this is when the Scythes died, I think. I mean, really, that was... Oh, yeah, right there. That's the 400 mil with the size. And that'd be about the middle of it. And it looks like... Oh, wow. So a lot of that was excessed. Interesting. Like, there was 400 metal reclaimed, but right afterwards, there was a little under 400 metal excessed for Dimefriend. Oh, wow, that's... There's a bug. Click, click it twice and the label's going to place. Okay, this is a bit of a bug with the end screen. Regardless, yeah, if you look at where that reclaim happens in the excess... Dime Throwing didn't quite reclaim it when they needed to, unfortunately. But still... Actually, that was probably a bad thing. <laughs> but still, that actually made no difference, because if it was excess, that means it was gone. Dime Throwing, however, didn't matter. They had the income advantage from the start, or just about the start. And the unit value advantage. I mean, the sides, the sides are really for flanking and getting rid of things that are probably undefended or only weakly defended. Getting rid of the ducks wasn't a terrible idea for defense, but after that happened, they should have gone south and north. Scout out expansions, figure out what's there, keep the other opponent contained to make sure that they just can't build, and also make it so that if they want to rebuild, they're always looking over their shoulder, building more defenses than they really need to, slowing their expansion down, allowing you to expand beyond that, and then build up a proper army, well, not proper army, build up a more direct army behind it. Because otherwise, sides really can't do too much. But yeah, going for the commander was the big mistake. Even though before then, like, just going to the main base is a mistake. Like, after that point, Hellward just had nothing. The sides at that point weren't really a threat. Dying Throne figured, well, I just, I'll just power through them. Let's deal with them when they come and have enough money to be able to outproduce them anyway. And that worked. So yeah, that was that. Although, 
damage yeah, damage dealt and received is a well, definitely in Hellwar's favor. But it didn't matter. Dying Friend just had more units. They built more units. They lost more units, but they built more units and had consistently higher unit value. So really it was the economy that won it for Dimethrind. Which is why the size should have attacked this out. Like, really, if you have that kind of Raider Force, go for the expansions. Always go for the expansions first. Folks in the main base, once that's the only thing left. Or if you figure they're going to have a lot of energy or something, maybe. Scouting it out's always good. But trying to kill it right out of the gate is usually a suicide. Anyhow, that was that. And that is it for me tonight. I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching, and have a good night, everyone.